I welcome you all in this course on power plant engineering and today we will discuss <laughs> some more non-conventional energy sources like wave and geothermal energy, both are non-conventional type of energy sources. In today's lecture, first of all I will start with the introduction of the lecture, then devices for wave energy conversion, what are the different devices which are used for wave energy conversion. Energy in marine current, there is a marine current also which, which the current which is below the surface of the sea. So, that is known as marine current. So, we will discuss about the marine current as well, tidal energy, components of tidal power plant also will be discussed in this lecture. Now, environmental problems with the geothermal energy will also be because we are also discussing geothermal energy in this lecture. So, environmental problems with the geothermal energies and advantages and disadvantages of geothermal energy. So, wave energy, first of all we will start with the wave energy, wave energy. In a sea, on a seabed, when there is an interaction between air and the sea water, air moves with a very high velocity and this very high velocity causes the wave in the sea, right. So, higher the velocity, higher is the wave. So, these waves contains enormous energy and this energy can also be trapped by some <coughs> means of, through some devices. So, higher if the velocity, higher the wave, if the duration. So, the height of the wave depends upon the velocity and, and time, time is also important, duration of that velocity because velocity also keeps on changing, velocity of air also keeps on changing. So, a particular velocity is flowing over the uh, seabed and for a particular time duration that will decide the energy in the wave and the height of the wave as well. <coughs> so, energy transfer because the velocity, the kinetic energy of air, it is obvious the kinetic energy of the air will transmit energy to the waves, right. And duration also uh, will uh, decide how much energy is being transmitted to the waves. So, the velocity and time duration is important in order to find energy and height of the wave. Height of the wave is also uh, important and the second thing is in addition to the height of the wave or amplitude of the wave, frequency of the waves. So, all these aspects have to be taken into account while we work on developing power with the wave energy. In fact, the wave energy is also uh, manifestation of solar energy because due to the solar heat only the temperature differential cre is created uh, on different parts of the world and due to this temperature difference, density difference is there and density difference causes the movement of the air and this movement of the air is causing the waves. So, it is indirect use of solar energy right and it is still a, a non-conventional power system. <coughs> now, the power from the wave, the, as I said the power varies with amplitude and frequency, but there is an empirical relation power is equal to 0 0.55 h square T p. H is the height of the wave, T p is the time in seconds. So, it is the height of the wave, normal height of the wave in meters. Tp in seconds and power in kilowatt. So, we can have rough, rough idea how much power will be developed with the wave. <coughs> now, wave height is another uh, issue because it keeps on changing with time. So, which height we should take in uh, at uh, for h? So, h is normally two third of maximum height. If we capture the image of the wave and we take the image of the wave and we take then in that case two third height of the wave is considered as the nominal height of the wave which can be taken into account while calculating the power of the wave through this equation. Now, potential, what is the potential of wave energy? What is the potential of wave energy? The wave energy potential throughout the world is between 8 to 10 trillion kilowatt hours per year. It is quite high. If it is properly tra trapped, <coughs> uh, it, and this potential is universally distributed, right. Highest 
uh, activity wave activity highest level of wave activity with the uh, annual average power potential is 2 to 70 kilowatt per meter square sorry meter not meter square per meter wave front per meter of wave front or the wave height. <laughs> And as you know, if you look uh, globally, this is Tropic of Cancer, this is Tropic of Capricorn, this is Arctic Circle, this is Antarctic Circle, this is 66.5, this is 23.5 South, 23.5 North, 66.5 North. So, this is Arctic Circle, this is Antarctic Circle. So, between 30 and 60 north 30 to 60 north and 30 to 60 south as well. So, 30 to 60 south this band and this band mainly there is water right. So, this part of the globe it has very high potential for uh, trapping the wave energy. Highest resources are available along the coast. of Western Europe, USA, Canada, South Coast and Australia also, South Coast and Australia. So, there are number of places in the world where we can trap the wave energy. <laughs> now, devices, now how to convert the wave energy devices. So, this technology is the most advanced technology for trapping the energy and it is costly also. That is many of the companies could not survive when we uh, develop the uh, this uh, wave energy when we try to wave, uh, trap the wave energy because this cost uh, technology is quite advanced and the energy produced by wave energy is also costly. So, wave energy plant cannot be used as a base load plant it is obvious. So, it cannot be used as a base load plant. So, the devices which are used are, are classified as number one offshore devices, number two onshore devices and or offshore, onshore or shoreline near the shore right. One is offshore and another is number three is deep sea devices quite in the deep sea where the depth is 40 meter or uh, I mean 40 meter or 60 meter. So, shore onshore devices they are placed on the shore itself they are easy to install they are easy to install and uh, fabrication is I mean transportation is also easy because you do not have to transport part into the deep sea, deep sea. When the installation in the is in the deep sea in that case the cost of the plant automatically shoots up. Now, one of the uh, examples of uh, uh, this devices uh, wave energy devices is OWS oscillating water column. So, uh, oscillating water column has been developed for uh, I mean uh, uh, it is it, it is placed in the deep sea where the where the depth is not very high it is uh, approximately 20 to 25 meters and uh, and it is a, a vertical cylinder it is, is a vertical cylinder having a piston type of arrangement piston type of arrangement piston is fixed here and water is wave is coming from here. So, when the wave water is entering and pushing the piston, piston is moving in upward direction. So, wave energy is trapped in the form of a linear mechanical linear motion which has momentum as well because momentum from these waves is transferred to this piston and that is how these a number of these type of cylinders are put on the seabed. They are half submerged right and output of these uh, uh, OWCs right 
uh, OWC is, is connected, is electricity is produced here itself by running a motor, right? And the, the, the through the cable it is transmitted to the shore. And you will find a number of OWCs are placed where the power is generated, a number of OWCs are because individual unit cannot produce much power. So, depending upon the power requirement, number of OWCs are put on the uh, seabed and power is trapped. But these type of plants, they cause hindrance, I mean the move near the movement, uh, movement near the coast. So, that is the uh, main drawback. Uh, uh, of these type of devices, they can go up to 40 meter water also, but sometimes they restrict the movement of the ship as well. So, we cannot go for a large extent, we cannot put such type of columns everywhere on the sea, right. So, that will, uh, I, I mean that will uh, create the obstruction in the movement of the vessels, right. But there are, there are certain uh, power generation units <coughs> like one Trivandram Param, it is producing 13 kilowatt unit, okay. And it is uh, uh, placed in the break, uh, breakwater, breakwater of the depth of 10 meters, chamber where the power is generated is 10 meter by 10 meter and 15 meter height, right. And diameter of the turbine rotor is approximately 2 meters. So, you can see the size of the plant and this escalates the cost of the plant as well. That is why this type of energy is not, uh, I mean cheap energy, it is a costly energy, but it can meet certain energy coastal uh, energy requirement near the coast because the running cost is not very high, right. So, this system delivers 8 months power for the 8 months from April to November, right and approximately 75 kilowatt of power is delivered by the systems and this system is used for example, for Thiruvananthapuram, this system is used for the desalination of water because for the desalination of water energy is required. So, this system was, is used, the system is used for the desalination of water. Now, another device is Palamis system. Actually, Palamis is, was a company which introduced this system and this system is uh, very interesting. There are number of drums, the number of drums, right. So, it is Call also called sea, sea snake and float. So, by several names it is called. It appears to be like a big snake floating on the uh, seabed and these drums are hinged together. So, on a sea, seabed there are drums and they are hinged together. Due to waves, these hinges either they will stretch or they will contract, they will move like this, right. When they are moving like this, a piston cylinder type of arrangement can be made, right. So, when the hinge is moving, then we can provide a piston cylinder type of arrangement here. So, the piston will move in, in, in true and flow direction or in, in a linear direction. Once this mechanical movement is attained, this can be easily converted because electronics and technology is very high. This is a high tech energy generation. I think it uses the sophisticated technology, the best technology in the world. So, this to and fro movement of the piston ultimately it is converted into the energy, electrical energy. So, uh, but if you look at the sea, you will find a, a sort of, because these drums are just for the maintaining the uh, inertia of the system, right. And they are half, they are often seen half floating on the sea floor. So, it appears that a snake is floating on the, it is not sea floor, sea bed. Now, this kind of system was first plant was started in Portugal, Ecuador. So, the first plant started in the Portugal and Ecuador. This plant is producing 2.25 megawatt. In fact, there are three type of systems and they are producing 75, uh, sorry, 750 kilowatt each. 750 kilowatt each, there are three systems. Together, they are uh, 
producing 2.25 megawatt. Now, energy in marine current, marine current. So, marine current energy is different from the wave energy, right. In marine current, <laughs> there for different reasons. First of all, difference in salinity and temperature in the water because in, under the sea if there is a differential in temperature and salinity that both of them will cause difference in the density due to density difference there will be a movement of the bulk of the fluid from one part to the another part okay that is first cause of the marine current second is coriolis component now the, when the coriolis force is caused on the movement on the earth because right when it is moving on its axis suppose this is 0 0 this is tropic of cancer this is tropic of capricorn the wind which is coming north to south will not move north to south it will move in this direction due to coriolis force and this wind which is going from south to north will go from move in this direction Sailors know this very well. In ancient, ancient time, the sailors knew it very well. And that is how they used to maneuver their ship in a particular season when they wanted to go in a particular direction. Right? Now, if you go for this Tropic of Cancer to Capri of Capricorns, this is North Arctic Circle and this is Antarctic Circle. So, in Arctic Circle and Antarctic Circle also, the direction is like this. And here, it is like this. So, they are converging here, here also they are converging and if you go this 40 south, there is hardly any, there is land mass, but land mass is not much and this region is known as the region of sea calm, there is not much movement of the air in 40 south, 40 south will not come here, it will come somewhere here. Okay, so salinity and temperature, second is Coriolis effect, number three is rise and fall of tides. Due to rise and fall of the tides also, the marine currents are formed. Now, these marine currents, they have high kinetic energy because the density of the water is approximately 800 times the density of air, right. So, in order to generate the same power, we need a very small, I mean size of the machine is comparatively small or with the same volume of water as for air, we can generate much, much more power, right. So, rest of the systems which are used for the marine current are same as those are for the wind turbines. Only there is a design change due to density change in the fluid. So, definitely the size of the power generating unit is reduced because the density of the fluid is very high. RPM is also reduced to certain extent because if we go for the higher, ext uh, higher RPM then higher viscous forces will be applied on the blades. So, life of the blades will be reduced. So, so, the using this uh, submarine turbines, you can harness the marine energy also. Now, for this energy, the global resources, now for every energy resource estimation is done. So, for the marine energy, the global estimate is 800 trillion kilowatt hour per year. This much energy uh, can be trapped and at many places like USA, UK, uh, uh, Canada, Italy, Greek island, there are so many places in the world where this type of energy can be harnessed. Now, after this, the energy from the sea can be trapped in the form of tidal energy. There are tides in the sea and tides are nothing but the change in the level of the sea and the level of the sea changes due to gravity from sun and moon. 
and after every 6 hour the level of the sea changes it will rise for 6 hour then it will fall it will rise and it will fall it happens 4 times and during new moon and full moon because new moon and uh, full moon the sun and the moon are aligned so both the forces work in the same direction so we get high tides so the level of the sea is very goes up to, to to highest level and then it comes down similarly when it is middle of this maybe 8 days after the uh, new moon or the full moon they are on a spring tides the tides are not very high they are i mean highest tide is minimum highest tide is minimum so that is known as the uh, is, that is known as a spring tide so this difference in tides level of the sea can be used for generating the power now for generating the power simply we need a dam a dike right this side it is sea this side this is tidal basin so a basin is performed so during the high tide the water will be filled in the basin the water when the water will come down because sea say sea is suppose there is a low tide sea is uh, on this level basin water is in this level and here there is a passage where we have fixed the turbine so when the sea rises a head differential will be developed and this differential will cause the turbine to move though the power will not be constant because at some point of time the both the levels will come same then what will happen after 6 hours uh, after uh, when, when when there is a low tide when there is a low tide the sea level will go down and this level will is filled with the water due to high tide and then this is sea level then reverse flow will take place and again turbine will generate. So, turbine will continuously producing energy may not be the constant energy because the energy will depend upon the head. So, nowadays we have sophisticated instrument and electronics right and so that which can be used for the purpose of getting the constant power from these turbines. So, excess energy has to be stored and when the energy is not available the stored energy will be used for used in the grid so that there is a constant supply of the energy. So, this is a single basin type and there are two basin type of system also where there are two basins upper basin and there is lower basin upper basin and there is lower basin and there are sluice gates here through which the water enters and here we have turbines. In two basin system also it is relatively stable if you go for the two basin system it is relatively stable and uh, uh, and because during the high tide this basin will be filled with the water and water will become stable in the both sides and we get relatively more uniform power from this type of system. Now there are certain advantages. First of all, it is a complex system. The geo, this type of tidal system is a complex system, but the source is inexhaustible because in in any type of uh, water, what uh, energy we are extracting from the sea, the energy source does not exhaust. Right? That is that is the benefit of such type of system. No fuel is required. Large area is also not required right. So, it can be worked, it can be used such type of systems can be used as a top of plant, they, they cannot be used as a base load plant, but they can always be used as a top of plant. <laughs> they are free from pollution, no pollution, they are pollution absolutely uh, I mean pollution free, but the construction work in the sea is difficult. If you go for the sea basin, the, the construction work in the sea is uh, uh, is difficult and I said earlier due to variation in tides we do not get the constant power. So, for getting the constant power some arrangement has to be made. 
Second thing is siltation in basin takes place. If you go for the hydro dam also, siltation takes place. So, here also siltation takes place after certain period either you clear the basin or install your plant somewhere else because that basin will become uh, not useless, but of less utility because it will be generating the less power. And lastly, the power trans because the cables have to be laid right and a special type of cables are required when the power is transmitted through the sea because three seas uh, it has saline water which is corrosive in nature. So, the power transmission become costlier when we power is generated in any kind of power which is generated in the sea. So, this type of plant is also available first plant was started in the France in 1965 and it is generating 240 megawatt power. So, all these non conventional sources are being used in, in some part of the world though their contribution is not significant, but they are using very high technology maybe in the future they may become <coughs> the conventional power systems nobody knows. Now, the next is geothermal power, geothermal plants, but the plants power plants which are running with the geothermal energy. When we talk about thermal energy it is something like converting work into the heat and for converting work into the heat we have very simple cycle which is known as Rankine cycle right. So, here also these plants will work on Rankine cycle uh, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, geothermal plants have turbines, they have condensers they have pumps only thing is heat addition does not take place in any boiler heat is extracted from geothermal energy right. So, uh, in the earth you may have seen so there are different type of geothermal power plants one is dry steam based power plants where dry or super heated steam is available. So, dry steam is available the dry steam plant second is wet steam third is hot water right. This steam is available at high pressure and temperature temperature is around 150, 140, 150 degrees centigrade. So, uh, The schematic of this type of power plant is very simple, they have a turbine from turbine sorry the output of the turbine goes to a condenser goes to a condenser from condenser there is a pump and from pump it goes to the it goes to underground and from the ground dry steam is emerged. This dry steam goes to the steam turbine and this this go to the reinjection well. So, simply there is a steam turbine condenser pump from pump the the water is pumped to the reinjection well from reaction well we get the dry steam dry steam again it is a simple Rankine cycle. Now, when the steam is wet, so we simply do not put the wet steam into the system because it may contain some particles right and they may erode the turbine blade. So, first we do what we do we make a closed circle of turbine condenser and pump and pump sends this uh, fluid is a working fluid is brine. So, brine goes to reinjection well, reinjection well, and from here the brine comes, it is not water, it is brine, it goes to the flex chamber, flex chamber brine it leaves, and the flex chamber, the steam which is leaving the flex chamber, it goes to the turbine. And this again is connected to the exit of the pump and it goes to the reinjection well. 
So, brine is the working fluid not the steam in this case when the steam is wet right. Steam coming from the source is wet. So, it is not directly used. So, that steam is used for the heating the brine water and in a flex chamber the, the steam is removed from the brine and the remaining high concentration of brine is connected with the outlet of the pump and it goes to the reinjection well. Now, same thing happens when there is water instead of uh, steam there is hot water. So, for hot water this is replaced by heat exchanger. Brine is used right and brine is and there is a heat exchanger where exchange of heat takes place between this brine high temperature brine water and water coming here at the exit of the turbine and this water gets heated and is converted into the steam. Because brine is at high temperature around 150 degree centigrade and pressure is also 4 to 5 bar right. So, this brine transmit heat to the water and water is converted into the steam and the steam goes to the turbine. This is how the geothermal power plants work, but the problem with the geothermal power plants is effluent is salty right and effluent contains sodium and potassium and other minerals and some of the compounds which are not environment friendly for example, lithium, fluorine, boron, arsenic they come on the surface and they, they, they cause damage to the environment. Application geothermal energy can be used for the space heating also besides the power generation it can be used for the space heating purpose also in where it is available. Uh, generating power is low for uh, geothermal engineering, but definitely the heat which is available in addition to the power generation it can be used for process heating as well if there is a nearby industry right. So, this is all for today thank you very much.